Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My, my name is Michael Moret. Matthew 22, verse 33 is where we resume our study today. Get your Bible, open it up to Matthew 22, 33. We will begin in just a minute. As always, I have to remind you about the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you're hungry for God's Word, if that's all you're interested is in Jesus and the Word of God, then that's a place for you to go because you won't find anything else there. Never. It's not a variety show. It's nothing like that. It's just the plain, simple Word of God, Genesis through Revelation, verse by verse. 38 years worth of archives, four complete series going on five all there for you to choose, click, and listen at the Bible, verse by verse, dot com. So check it out today. Bring your Bible. That's all you need. <clears throat> and Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Matthew 22, 33. And when the multitude heard this, heard the teachings of Jesus about the resurrection, shot down the Sadducees, the liberal Jewish sect that didn't believe in the resurrection. Jesus proved some from Scripture that they were wrong. Not that it would change their mind. It's not going to change their mind. If people are hardened in their beliefs, and many are, they're hardened in their religious beliefs and they're convinced that what they believe is of God. You can show them in Scripture. Won't make a bit of difference. Got to pray for them. But anyway, it didn't make a difference with these folks. But the multitude, the people who sat and listened, that was a different story. They were astonished at what Jesus said. He made it crystal clear from Scripture that there is a resurrection, that there is life after death. 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, who was a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, let's just stop right there first. These people are out of their ever-loving minds. These religious leaders, it's just, they send one group after another to try to trip Jesus up in front of the people, try to embarrass him, try to confuse him with scripture, get him backed into corner, into a corner so he says something that turns people off. And here they are again, trying to trick him. It always backfires on him. It always backfires on you too, if you stick to the word of God and get your answers from scripture. So, ask him a question, testing him, trying to trick him. The people were amazed at what Jesus was saying as he was approached by these different groups. But the Pharisees and the Sadducees were both frustrated in their attempt to trip Jesus up. So, not wanting to quit, the Pharisees sent out one of their top rulers who was a lawyer. And in those days, a lawyer was supposedly an expert in Scripture. So this guy really thinks he's something. He's going to trip Jesus up. You're going to try to trip Jesus up by using God's law. That's a laugh. Since Jesus is God and since the law of God, the true law of God, is something that he invented, well, let's see what he tries. Verse 36. Master... Which is, the, which is the great commandment in the law? 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I love I love these verses because I like things simple. I'm a simple man 
with a simple brain and simple ways and simple taste. And I've been that way even before I was saved. My favorite song when I was in high school, 10 years before I was saved, was a song by a guy whose name was Lobo, and it was called The Simple Man. A simple man. I guess I'm just a simple man. And I related with that. And this verse makes it so simple. How do you keep the whole law? How do we remember all the commands of God in the Bible? And Jesus just boiled it down to two. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> the entire Bible can be condensed down to those two commandments. Love God and love your neighbor. And you do that. You know what? Everything else in the Bible is just an expression of those two commandments. I love it simple. 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them. So it's Jesus' turn now to ask some questions to the religious leaders. They use their questions as an attempt to trick Jesus, cause him to stumble in front of the people. But Jesus will use his question to try to make them understand the truth so that their immortal souls can be saved from hell. 42, here's his question. What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. They knew the answer to the question of whose son is the Messiah. They knew the answer. Every Jew knew that the Messiah would be the physical descendant of David, so they answered that correctly. Look at 43, though. He saith unto them, How then doth David in the Spirit, in other words, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, how then does David in the Spirit call him Lord? In other words, Jesus says, How is it that King David calls his great, 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 great grandson, the Messiah, Lord? As he was inspired to write that scripture, he called his great-great-grandson Lord. How can that be? I mean, to call your descendant Lord was unheard of in those days. You just wouldn't do that in that culture. Even if your son rose to be the king, you would not call him Lord. It was unacceptable in that culture. But David did. And Jesus quotes David in the scripture, saying it. How, no wonder Jesus said, how can that be? Ever think about that? Guess not. Guess they hadn't. Jesus is going to make them think about it right here. Verse 44. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So he quotes the scripture that David wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, where he says, where his great-great-grandson, his Lord, said unto thee, Lord, set at my right hand. So Jesus is trying to make these people understand that the Messiah, that the Messiah is in the flesh, yes, his son. And why in the world would King David call his offspring Lord? There's no way any father, as I mentioned, or any grandfather would ever call their grandson or son Lord in that culture, not if that man was only a man. They just would not do it. Now, if the offspring just happened to be 100% man, David's offspring, pure man, and also God, that would explain it. And that is the explanation. It's a different story. So Jesus wraps it up in verse 45. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? How can that be? Figure it out. The rulers never thought about this scripture. Evidently, they never thought it through because if David called him Lord, then how is Jesus just his son? Jesus is the Messiah. 
All the people believed that, at least most did. He proved that he was the Messiah by fulfilling all the scriptures in the Old Testament that pointed to the Messiah and what he would do, what he would be like, what he would teach, what he would say. He proved he was the Messiah. And now he's proving that he's not only the son of David, the human Messiah, but he's also God. Otherwise, David, his great-great-granddaddy, would never call him Lord. Jesus has just proclaimed his deity. And they knew it. The religious leaders knew it. There was nothing they could say. Jesus had backed them into the corner once again using the Holy Bible. Because look at 46. And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither dared any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. They finally gave up. And Jesus, in his arguments with them, he always pointed to the scripture. He always proof, used as a proof text for anything that he taught the Holy Bible, teaching you and I that we need to understand the Bible, we need to read it, we need to study it, we need to understand it so that we can use it as our point of reference also and as our last word and final authority. That's how Jesus treated the Scripture. That's how he answered all his critics with the Bible one right after another. He, even when he was tempted, remember, by Satan in the wilderness, what did he do? He quoted scripture. The importance of God's word cannot be overestimated. And now the rulers are thinking, yeah, yeah. The Bible teaches that Messiah must be more than man or David never would have called him Lord. Yeah, that's true. They got to be thinking that. And they are correct if they are. Jesus is more than just a man. Of course, Jesus' mother Mary and Joseph were both descendants of David. That's how Jesus became the legal descendant of King David and the rightful heir of the throne of Israel. Jesus is the legal heir to the throne of David because he is a physical descendant of David. Jesus is the legal son of David, but Jesus is not the physical son of David. Jesus was placed into that line of David when the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and she conceived Christ in her womb. And that's how Jesus is both David's offspring and his Lord, both God and man. Study all of God's word with me. I hope you see the importance of studying God's word and knowing it. Study with me, verse by verse, the whole counsel of God at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. And if you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, pray for me in God's word. You'll be a part of something that just is consumed with and dedicated to wholly, completely, 100% getting out the whole counsel of God, verse by verse, and has been for 38 years. If that interests you and you want to be a part of that, you think that glorifies God, then pray for me in God's word right now before you forget that makes you a big part of this ministry. Write a note reminding you to pray for me and God's word. Put that thing on your refrigerator door and keep praying. And then when you take a break from studying with me at the Bible, verse by verse dot com, you can go to the front page, Click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry. Appreciate it. Until next time, so long, everyone.